Hello and uh, good evening to all of you. Ahomia Ingrazi by Hindi and Itinuta Pahate Kotabati of Karim. Protome Apnagatake Swagotam Jarisa. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, very interestingly, uh, day before yesterday, I put up a, a quote of our union sports and youth welfare minister, Mr. Kiran Bijiju, which said, uh, We have to start now with children below 12. If we want to qualify for Olympics and World Cup in 10 to 15 years, that was a quote uh, which was actually given by, if you can see, which I posted on uh, my Facebook page. And interestingly, uh, a lot of people have actually commented and uh, it was really nice to see a lot of people coming up with their comments and uh, I even did a poll for it. And um, it said uh, 92 people, 92 percent people said yes, they really agreed to it and only 8% uh, sports lovers felt it no. Uh, very interesting, uh, comments came in from uh, different people associated with sports. So I would like to start my discussion with uh, uh, Mr. Gumpe Rime. He is joining me in moment from now. Let me send him a request. with uh, to Mr. what uh, he has to say and you can also send in your questions if you want let's talk sports is what I want to speak as of now and interestingly very few people when we talk about sports really come live but uh, yes. hello good evening good evening Prasna. how are you I'm good thank you how are you I'm good. I'm good too. Uh, so good to see you. You look completely fresh. Yeah. Fresh <laughs> yes, in lockdown. Fresh in lockdown. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not much pressure? No, no, not at all. So, yeah. And so you must be busy with uh, all sort of digital seminar that's going on and uh, talking sports and football, isn't it? Yeah, that's the only thing we can do at the moment since we are all locked down. So it's not uh, ad advisable to go outside. So as much as you can reach out to people sitting at home. So trying to do that. Right. So um, thank you so much for joining me, first of all. Good evening to you and to all my friends who are uh, live as of now. So it's really interesting, you know, when uh, our sports minister has come up uh, with a quote and a lot of people have reacted and given their opinion. Uh, what he actually said is we have to start now with children below 12 if we want to qualify for Olympics and World Cup in the coming years. In fact, 10 to 15 years is what is targeting. So that's uh, what Mr. Rikiju has rightly said. And, uh, you know, I had a poll. I ask some of people to vote, uh, do you agree or what's your opinion and you'll be amazed to see or amazed to know that 92% said yes, they do agree with what Mr. Richie said and 8% said no. And uh, so this, what's your first reaction to this when you hear such a comment coming in from Mr. Richie Uh I absolutely agree with him, you know, it's like uh, catch them young and watch them grow. We cannot uh, right. expect someone to straight away jump into a university and start performing yeah, and start writing competitive exams. Same goes. Uh, children need to go early in uh, elementary schools, uh, nursery schools, and then go primary, then go middle school. And then stage-wise, they go and uh, reach the level, top level, and then they go out in the competitive world. The same goes to sports. If you don't have the base, uh, the proper base, you don't have the basics right, you know, it's difficult to achieve what we uh, are looking for yeah, in terms of, you know, there are different age group, a different uh, type of sports uh, we're referring to here, not just uh, the game of football. It applies to every kind of sports. Starting early is the key, you know, as early as you, the more you early you start, you know, the chances of making it big is more. Right. So are we, are we uh, trying to get into uh, what the Chinese have taken up? And because we have grown up watching Olympics, we all have grown up watching Olympics, and we always tend to see that uh, when it comes to Olympics, uh, podium finish, it's always the Americans and the Chinese. You know, there seem to be a competition between the two countries. And uh, as far as we know, as far since we all are associated with sports, you, you'll be quite uh, happy to know and you agree with that. 
because the Chinese, uh, they, they tend to start their training very early. Their kids uh, start training very early. So is this the reason that, you know, our sports minister or our sports missionary has also started thinking that it's very easy or it is going to be, you know, very fruitful in the near future if we can catch them early and, you know, can uh, train them properly and can uh, make them a professional? Uh, it's not just, it's not, not only about China, you know, in sports, when you talk about sports, sports, it's a way of life. In you know, if you look at this, uh, right. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. No, like, you know, it's for, it, it has to be inculcated very early uh, in the, uh, when the kids are small. Uh, one more good mm. thing we have heard is, you know, it's going to be made compulsory in school. It will be a part of the curriculum in the school, not just an extra curriculum activities, which used to be earlier. So once it is made mandatory and compulsory, sports should be a mandatory curriculum in school. As in the school itself, the school will take it seriously and more children will take up the sports. So uh, here, you know, when we talk to a lot of uh, uh, guardians, you know, who want their kids to take up sports and want them to be a professional, either a cricketer or a footballer or a badminton player. The problem here, when you talk about school curriculum and, you know, sports being a major subject now, uh, the problem is the timing of the school uh, kids. Because schools in Guwahati, in Assam, it starts so early. It's like 7 o'clock, you've got to reach your school. So there was time when uh, earlier, you know, the ex player, when we interact, they keep on saying that the morning time is the best time when we train and you know, we have all the, the kind of energy in our body. So the morning half we used to train and then the 9 o'clock we reach school. So that is the time when we... Um, where, where we get a lot of training. But now the timing has changed. Every school in Guwahati and Assam, it's like, you know, 7 o'clock, you've got to reach school. So uh, it's basically like 6 o'clock, you wake up and you rush to your school. So you do not have time for your morning class session. So they, so these are the minor things that needs to be, you know, checked. Yes. Uh, if you look at the children, you know, they are full of energies. They have, you know, bundle of energies. If you ask them to stay back after the school hours, and if there is a program for them, the sports activity is there, the children will happily stay back and do that uh, extra event. Rather than, you know, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I've read it somewhere that the syllabus now, and, you know, uh, less book time and uh, at the same time the physical activities also will be included in the school curriculum so it will aid to it you know otherwise the children will have a lot of uh, homework a lot of studies i think the burden is too much on the kids i can see in, uh, if, you, if i compare my kids are also when they come back from school you know by the time they finish their homework it's already 10 o'clock at night and again they have to prepare for the next day in the morning yeah. so i think the burden has to be eased okay. a little bit more so that, you know, they can balance between education, uh, academic and uh, sports activities at the same time. Absolutely. Uh, I just want to read some of the uh, important uh, reactions that have come in. You, in fact, you have also commented when I put up that post of Mr. Rijiju. Uh, the Raktim Haikya is uh, one of uh, a person associated with uh, the Assam uh, Tennis Association. He said, I do, but the selectors of the talented youngsters will have to be chosen with great care. He's talking about the selectors, the ones who will select these uh, grassroots level, you know, players or the athletes. The success of the program depends on the credibility of the selectors. That is a very vital point that he's pointed out, Mr. Rafim Saikia, isn't it? Yeah, yeah uh, you need to identify the right person. You know, uh, the person who is uh, who has a specialization in uh, specific sports, they need to be involved in identifying the right talent uh, rather than sending one person to select uh, players for different events. You know, so the person has to be specialized in that particular event 
and then he will have better idea to spot the right talent. So it's very important that we identify the right person then who will be responsible for identifying the young talent. And of course, nurturing and developing, it's a process which can take place later on. But it's very important to identify that this is the potent, uh, right potential. Right. Another one, Mr. Vishwajit Ghosh, he's someone associated with badminton. He's a coach in Guwahati. He says uh, age 12 is a bit late considering the present standard in the top level. For example, a gymnast retires quite early, generally at the age of 18, and makes a debut in Olympics as early as 12 from countries like USA, China, Russia. So I did and I feel either the body contact sports also should start by six years or seven years, but a good initiative nevertheless by the government to make it a practical sports curriculum. Sports as a curriculum should be introduced in schools and so that the yellow metal really comes to India. So do you agree with uh, some of the points being uh, mentioned here? When he mentions that, uh, you know, uh, gymnast, yes, he rightly said gymnast, uh, they retire very early. This is one sports when you start very early and you retire very early. And uh, he said six to seven years should be the ideal age to pick up instead of uh, under 12. Of course, uh, starting early, as I, uh, I think uh, I have uh, uh, commented on the, your status also, like uh, 12 years, I said. But, uh, yes. you know, if you look at, uh, I can only speak more about football, if this is uh, gymnastic. And I can, I have yes. seen even in table tennis, uh, once I, I met uh, small kids uh, traveling in, 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 an air, in an airport, like uh, they were, we were discussing, he said, I'm Indian number one, I'm Imbun. I, look, I looked at them and they were just 14, 15 years old kids, you know, table tennis, you know, even table tennis and gymnastics, maybe, you know, they start very early uh, and then, you know, they retire a bit earlier as well. But when it comes to game of football, okay, starting early is important, but the maturity and the peaking time is a bit later than the gymnast and table tennis uh, players. Okay, talking about football, you know, uh, we spoke last week uh, during a podcast and you mentioned about uh, how you can, we can groom people and how uh, these northeastern girls, the female uh, footballers, really need to come up and with uh, the football federation now giving up a green signal, you know, that every club should have a female a women's team. So how do you see this entire development in the football scenario? I think it's a, it's a very good uh, initiative by the Federation to making it mandatory for all the clubs to have a women's team. You know, we need to involve uh, women also in, the, in a, it's just, uh, I'm talking from a different perspective. Just imagine if uh, husband and wife are talking for discussing football at home and the children, they grow up listening to the discussion of the parents. And you know, the, par the at home only the pa children is learning about uh, football uh, right. technique or tactics. So at home only they are learning it, you know, that they are discussing. So we need to involve uh, female football as well. So you can see that the girls have been doing very, very uh, but the level of popularity in terms of popularity, it's, it's still in a different stage. So with the uh, Under-17 World Cup happening next year, and then uh, right. Asia Cup is also coming to India, I think it will give a big boost to women's football in India. Yes, I remember, you know, last November, and they were inspecting the stadium, and uh, after this inspection, they had a press meet, and, uh, this Roma Khanna who was looking up to the entire uh, FIFA under 17 women's team. She said, This is going to be. I asked her, What is uh, the FIFA under 17 women's World Cup going to be different? She said, This is going to be a different package, you know. You know, we will enjoy something which you have never seen before. This is going to be a totally different thing. So, uh, what do you think? A totally different package she's talking about. Uh, you know, when the uh, when there's a World Cup or a competition of that level happens, you know, there are, you can see a lot of changes happening, not only about just the game, but about the infrastructure development, the training facilities, a uh, lot of things you can see that will be 
uh, initiate and a lot of things will come up uh, in line with the competition. So it's all, uh, you know, advantage. We can use the facilities later. And then the, if you look at the competitions, the people will get to watch the women's football. So more girls will definitely, it will motivate more girls to take up the sport. And then if, if uh, our teams can do well, and then uh, they go on to become like uh, one of our players, uh, Baladevi, he has gone on to play. He's playing in Scotland, you know, setting a big example for the other girls to follow. And then these are the success stories. Definitely the girls will, will look up to and then, you know, try to emulate them. Thank you. Right, you rightly mentioned about Bala Devi and uh, she being one of the tech bearer. You know, uh, in every sport, let us say that you need icons. And when you have Bala Devi and Bendem Devi moving forward with uh, the minimum facilities available and the kind of support they get. So how do you see, uh, how and when can you see, you know, how to groom these young people now? Because you've been associated with um, active coaching now. And you have traveled the entire country for this, and you are grooming your now. So, how how do we groom them now, and how do we bring them in the forefront? How do we give these young girls the confidence that yes, you can do something really big, like uh, your male counterpart? Uh, first of all, uh, this uh, women's football has to be marketed well, uh, with more competi more competitions for them. Uh, we can see last time, if you see the IWL, it runs for a few weeks. Right. Hmm. Play is played home and away, played in a longer duration of time. It is played over a six-month period. And uh, if not for this pandemic time, the upcoming even could have been much longer with more teams coming joining in the in the Indian Super League and the I League, so things are improving. But for women's football, I think we need to increase the duration of this competition. It has to be a year-round program, not just for one month competition where they prepare for one month, play for one month, and then after that they are all back to their regular household activities. So it will not help. We need to uh, create a lot of competitive uh, competition for them and at the same time create job opportunities for them as well so that post retirement they have uh, something to uh, something which can take care of them after the retirement absolutely very well said when you talk about uh, security a job security and financial security are the two factors which is uh, absolutely required for any sports person be it a man or a woman uh, recently, during the Halo India, you know, the Assam uh, women's team did it so well. I mean, they really played so well with very, very minimum facility, very uh, minimum, uh, you know, kind of uh, facilities available. And to my utter surprise, when I was seeing uh, some of the interaction with these young girls coming in from different nooks and corners of Assam, all of them have come from financially very, very poor backgrounds. So their parents do not understand what sport is involved. Why are you going and playing football? It's better you sit back at home, do some household work, so that you know, sometime later you can get married to somebody and you know we are well settled. This is the kind of mentality that's going on, despite the fact some of the these women, young women players, have come out and you know they have shown their talents. But what after that? After Kilo India, they just back to their normal work, back to their home, back to nobody with no uh, security or finance, financial security or job security. Forget about job security. Though. When you talk about, uh, I'm talking about job security. So you rightly mentioned there has to be a structure, and these girls need to be engaged throughout the year, right? Yeah. And uh, I think the trends are changing nowadays. You can see that uh, uh, when uh, you speak about uh, our golden girl, Hima Das, uh, nobody knew about her when she was struggling, when she was trying to get to that level. But once she achieved and once it became a sensation, then not everybody's talking about her. So at the same time, we yeah. can see all that the government... All the came in, all the yes. brands came in. Yeah. Yes, so... Now we can see that the government is also uh, providing them financial you know, support nowadays. 
uh, after they are giving them some rewards and in uh, in terms of reward they are giving them financial assistance you know those things will definitely motivate the, uh, the youngsters that you know if you achieve something that yes government is going to help me and they are going to give me rewards or uh, they are going to take care of me so those things will definitely help uh, young youngster to take up a sport if even if you are winning and you just the government is not doing anything for you then definitely the people will say you know there is no life after retirement so why take up sports so but now these things are changing even we can see that there are a lot of uh, interest is taken up by sports ministry and then, you know a lot of uh, even uh, some of the play, uh, players former players who have retired and they are struggling you know we have seen that some kind of assistance also have been extended to them so these are things which you know encourages people to take up sports So you need to say the bottom line is that you need to have some some kind of financial support, be it a veteran player or a young player or a coach or a support team, right? Definitely. Definitely. Now there's you know if you win an Asian Games, there is a criteria that uh, this much so and so amount will be given to that player. Not only that, even in national games and Kelo India games, there are some financial packages. So only in Olympic and Asian games, That's only the cream yeah. and the top players they make it there. But if it is Kelo India, and then there are lot of athletes can take part in in these events. There's a kind of Olympic games where different disciplines are uh, are being played. So there are there are scope for the players. to on in that level also now we can see a lot of financial rewards for winning a gold medal winning a silver medal and if you win a gold there are chances that you get a government job also nowadays so this is definitely a positive change so okay, from a very uh, layman's point of view uh, if i may ask you when you go out for you know scouting young talent Mr. Rijiju has also said that uh, the grassroots level scouting will be done uh, with the help of the Sports Authority of India. That will be done in the zonal level. The scouting uh, will be done in the zonal level with the help of Sports Authority of India under Kelo India scheme. So this is what he said. So from a layman's point of view, when you go out and you know when a guardian comes up to you and says, "Sir, what will happen? What will happen? Football will happen? What will happen?" So uh, what is the how do you explain them? how do you make them understand that yes your boy or your girl has potential when they are playing uh, under these particular schemes they will be rewarded uh, handsomely later on if they perform well then they have a brighter future how do you convince them hello yeah, okay can you report there was an yes, interruption in between yeah no can you repeat uh, because i couldn't I hear because I there was, was an interruption yeah yes My question to you is: From a layman's point of view, you have been scouting talent in different nooks and corners of the country, especially in the northeast, in Arunachal, in Mizoram. Uh, Mr. Vijay just said that you know the scouting will be done in a zonal level, zonal level by Sports Authority of India under the Kelo India scheme. So when you meet parents, you know when they come up to you and say, uh, "What will happen if my boy and girl they play?" what is the future future to kuch hai nahi khel rahe to kya kare ask them to leave so how do you convince those people that you know come and play sports is a way through which you can change your life you know it's a way of social change you know how do you convince them i'm sure you have gone through such kind of experiences yeah when when we talk about young kids uh, playing sports any kind of sports you know first of all many of the kids don't take up or don't play sports to uh, reach certain level or become something they just love to play it's it's there in every child you know it's a, it's a way of life so it has to be in the, in our culture you know to encourage children to play game of sports not just to win an olympic game but to live a healthy life it will it will help them to identify uh you know our our children will learn to live in a group they learn discipline they learn to live healthy they, they will know how, what are the bad things to avoid what are the good things to stay healthy there so many things positive things to take from you know if you make it as a professional that's a bonus if you don't make it as a professional still you learn a lot by playing sports so it's a win win situation if your child play football uh, every parent must be encouraged you know to allow the children to play game it's about players uh, physical activity he has to be active physically he has to be active 
So in the process, the identification takes place. You know, then the scouts start identifying the right talent. Let everybody play the game, be it any kind of sports. So parents has to encourage that and it has to be in our system, our culture. Uh, we don't have that sports culture, unfortunately. You know, people, uh, parents are only thinking about sending their children to uh, NASA and uh, all kinds of uh, things. Be a doctor but, uh, or an engineer. Yeah. Yes. So let them play sports. Yeah. And then the, we have, as you mentioned, we, the, uh, the government is thinking about journal-wise. Of course, we have to do it journal-wise. Given the size of the population we have in India, it's not possible for one person to travel across the whole country and scout talent. You know, there are different events. There are different person qualified for that, you know, specialized for that event. Uh, and then it can be clustered into zones because the population is big. And if people come to Northeast uh, to scout, you know, I would say, I would suggest that people from Northeast should be involved in scouting Northeast talent. Because of cultural difference, if people from South, North, East, we have vast difference culturally. So people from North will understand the people from North in a better way, but he has to be a qualified person. And if we pick up the right person to scout, definitely we can find the best talent and groom them. Yes, definitely. The scenario in Assam and Northeast has really changed in the last couple of years. But uh, like you mentioned, there has to be a sporting culture. We have to develop that, isn't it? Because uh, as a journalist, as a sports journalist, when you know big events like Halo India, FIFA, uh, then cricket uh, tournaments takes place in Assam, in Guwahati, different stadium. Like you know, uh, off late Guwahati has been hosting a lot of international events here. The very fact that you know uh, you find the stadiums really empty. You don't find you find very few. You know, parents will take up their sons and the daughters to the stadium, you know, to watch a match live, to watch some of the big stars in different Olympic sports, you know, playing in front of their eyes. So, so you first of all need to develop a sporting culture. We then even think about, you know, producing more and more stars. Definitely, if you if you if you go to Europe and you see that uh, every Saturday, Sundays, if you see parents' involvement in the game and in the grassroots level, it's huge. You know, <laughs> the parents will take their children and they allow them to play, and the parents will be standing around uh, by the ground by the side, and they will be cheering the children's kids. So we can see that now there's in the cities in India, like Mumbai, Bangalore, Delhi. We can see that those this culture are catching. But if you look at, you know, some places yeah, like North, you know, it's a, it's a... many places where, you know, uh, still right. we need to catch up on those lines. So So, uh, what can we expect in the days to come when it comes to football? Uh, especially, we are talking about uh, female football. What can be expected? Pardon? What can, can be you expected in, uh, when we talk about female football team in Northeast in the days to come? In the Northeast? Yes. Okay. The North East, as usual, always have been a powerhouse when it comes to women's football. Uh, <clears throat> we, they were quite dominating. The Manipur were undisputed champions in all age category for the past 10 years. But if you look at the current setup of the Under-17 World Cup girls team, you know, the number of girls from North East are not as big as it used to be before. So it shows that, you know, other states are also catching up, other states are also taking up the sport seriously. Or we are not doing enough, or we are happy with what we are doing. We need to upgrade ourselves and you know uh, take one step further, so that you know uh, they still produce the best talent for the country. So if you look at the current setup of the World Cup under 17 girls, there are a lot of players from uh, places like uh, Jharkhand, Orissa, Goa, and of course Goa is a very big footballing state. But a lot of girls you can see from other states coming up as well. 
So, uh, can we say that the northeastern girls have an edge over the girls of Assarka and Goa and Haryana? Uh, it used to be earlier, you know, we, we used to dominate when it comes to women's football. Every national championship, you know, they, no need to predict if Manipur and Kerala or Goa is playing. We know that Manipur is going to win. But that is not the scenario at the moment. Others are also catching up. So we need to have, uh, I think, uh, more competitions now, develop uh, more uh, uh, structures, new structures for the women's development there, and a lot of competition within the Northeastern itself. Because traveling uh, to other parts of India is difficult. So maybe within, within the region, if there is a competition, age group competition for girls, definitely it will help in improving. You earlier mentioned in one of my interviews, during uh, one of the interviews of podcast, that Manipur probably is the only state in the Northeast to have a proper, uh, you know, structured uh, league for women in all age categories. Am I right? Yes. Not only, uh, you know, that, you know, they are the first to have a women's league in India. That's incredible. You know, it, it was way back, I think, very, almost 30, 35 years back, they started the women's league. So in some states, still, we don't see a men's league also is not happening in some of the states properly. But they have a women's league every year. So it shows that, you know, they have a all year round program for women to develop. So they play a lot of competitive games within the states. That's why we see... Uh, Bala Devis and Bam Bams and Roni Badas and so many, you know, Gracies. There are so many coming up from that state. Right. Okay, thank you so much for giving us your uh, uh, your analysis on what's happening and uh, in uh, football when it comes to women football in you know, Assam and Northeast. I hope we will speak on this topic again some other time. And uh, for, thank you again for giving me your time. It was wonderful talking to you. And uh, as always, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, it's a pleasure always discussing, discussing football. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Pleasure. Hello. Take so, care. Uh, that was Bumpe Rime talking oh. to me exclusively. And thank you so much, uh, Bumpe, once again. I'll come back yeah. again with another very important topic. And uh, we will talk sport, which I proudly say, let's talk sport. Thank you for watching and uh, giving me your feedback. Thank you. See you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks, Bumpe. Bye.